when we do like the public spaces, we go there, we start talk to people around, start to see what's the vibe a little bit, try to understand the history, and how they used to use this space 20 years ago, 30 years ago, 40 years ago, and how they see this space evolving in the next uh, decade or so. And the aim is to refurbish five houses and two public space, and to dynamize the territory where these houses are placed. So I'm Samuel Kalika, I'm the founder of Critical Concrete, and uh, that's it. Uh, I'm Martina, I've been collaborating with the Critical Concrete since a few years now. The project that we're doing with the municipality of Esposende in Apulia, Fao and San Bartolomeo de Mar is a project that's co-financed by uh, EU indirectly, um, going through a social innovation fund um, in Portugal. Basically what we're doing there is educational formats to empower communities in improving their space. So Apulia is one of our case study. Our case study is a public space placed in front of uh, social housing, a big uh, block, uh, where right now there is a square, a football ring, there are some facilities, but the space is not really used. So uh, our aim it will be to dynamize with the community and to have some participatory projects, like either in the design phase, either in the uh, construction phase. Fazer uma coleção de, de fotografias tiradas para, para as pessoas que moram, que moram cá. So first, we went there different times with the Critical Concrete team just to observe like how the people were using the area, like which day was more crowdy, and so we start to go there in summer. And uh, why? Because in this Apulia, it's, um, the content is a bit specific, like there is a lot of people that are immigrants, so it means Portuguese people that are not living anymore in Portugal. And, and it, it added a layer of difficulty for us also kind of to work with this because, sure, it's like the window of doing participatory design is very short and and also we need to kind of be aware that maybe like there are two categories of citizens the one that are living there all the time and the one that come here like to party and do barbecues on every summer we start to go there in august to observe like who are coming back how how many people were um, were actually using the space and we start doing interview to people that we were just meeting in the street, like stopping them, asking for some video, like present the project, and we get some nice feedback, like people were really open to talk with us. And we did this uh, research uh, in August and in uh, September, because we wanted to reach the two targets. <laughs> Aqui o espaço, mesmo para nós jogarmos a bola, é um espetáculo. Nós, quase todos os meus amigos vêm aqui. Muitos moram aqui, na Apulia, outros moram fora, da Apulia. Mas estamos sempre aqui, para ser. Eu entro no carrinho a jogar a bola. Sim. E claro está, se isto estivesse melhor, as crianças podem brincar, não é? Por, por exemplo, eu andava aqui de patins. Tanto dentro como fora, patins em linha. Agora vais andar ali de patins em linha? Não. O que era fixe? Olha, acho que o mais lógico e imediato é recuperar o que já existe, não é? Uh, Vê-se que está tudo muito degradado, as raízes das árvores a levantar os paralelos todos, a, a cor está toda desvanecida, está tudo em cimento. Uh, está mesmo literalmente tudo a precisar de, de uma mãozinha. Está a ver um pequeno muro? Umas poucas presas e tal, era tudo? Olha! Yeah, so after the interview, uh, later we collect all of the data from already like having in mind some like uh, problems that were in the, that need to be solved in the area. What we did is we meet the inhabitants uh, during one day to have this participatory design uh, day. It was really nice because actually happened that a lot of people come over. There were like uh, around 30 people. And what we did basically we prepared a big uh, master plan of the area. And we asked to the inhabitants through cards that were representing like possibility, object, like new thing happening in the area, like helping to solve all of these problems, to place them and to choose them which one were a priority for them. And they were placed on the master plan to show where they were seeing these things happen. For example, for instance, okay, like I would like to have um, a play area for my kids in there, and they were putting this card there. Barbara. 
So we did this patch patch of design, like Marty explained, um, with the card and so on, uh, to try to get a, an idea of what was really needed and what, what could be done. And then at the end of the day, what we do is like we check what we can do with, within the limits of this program, like both uh, legally and economically. And, and then we're going to go back again with uh, a kind of a wrapped up plan of the thing that they designed and then design the final pieces, design work and like the application uh, installation is going to happen um, starting yeah, later this year with the inhabitants, like uh, trying to involve them in every step with also our post-graduation program, like uh, with our students, so they can like also participate and so on. Um, and also allows kind of more on the spot decision that makes people feel owner of their construction. So it's like, if I decide that actually this is not going to be a table, it's going to be a kitchen here. We need a kitchen here. Everyone agrees, we need a kitchen here, no? And then it's like, yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, we make a kitchen here and we, change a little bit the plan and this kind of like fluidity allows a lot of like um, uh, good sense of ownership of, of, the, of the project I think. Nice. Yeah.